space stations are invaluable resources for the study of the cosmos. Facilities like the famous International Space Station ISS, provide an incredible view of our home planet while also serving as viewpoints for the rest of the solar system. Perhaps even more importantly, space stations are the perfect testing grounds for extended stays in space and their potential impact on humans. Prospective missions to Mars and beyond would be impossible without the important lessons gathered from space stations. Of course, before we had the highly dependable ISS, there was a bit of trial and error. Today, we revisit the case of Salyut 7, a station that required quick thinking and exceptional bravery to rescue it after an unforeseen hiccup. Let's talk about it. The 1970s and 80s were the pioneer period for low-orbit space stations, and the Soviet Union was the undisputed leader in this burgeoning arena. The Soviets and the world's first space station, the Salyut 1, was launched on the 19th of April 1971 and spent 175 days in orbit. It was occupied by a total of six crew, two at a time. Following this success, the Salyut program continued in earnest. Unfortunately, the next three stations, DOS-2, Salyut-2, and Cosmos 557 were busts that either failed to reach orbit or suffered some misfortune that made them uninhabitable. Naturally, the Soviets were not discouraged and soon saw success with Salyut 3, 4, 5 and 6. The latter was the first Soviet space station to exceed 1,000 days in orbit and was the first station in the world to host over 10 crew members. In fact, Salyut 6 was home to 33 astronauts during its five-year spell. On the 19th of April 1982, a few months before the end of Salyut 6's run, the Soviet Union launched Salyut 7 as a backup vehicle. Salyut 7 had many of the same features and equipment, and a few upgrades. Salyut 7 Mission Salyut 7 was made to carry out several objectives, the first of which was the continuation of TKS expansion module testing. The modules, also known as Space Station Ferries, were meant to serve as resupply vehicles that would dock to, to Salyut 6 and 7. Cosmos 1443 was the module that docked to Salyut 7, starting from the 4th of March 1983 to the 14th of August that same year. The module supported the crew of Soyuz T9. Salyut 7 also launched the Iskra 2 satellite. Becoming the first space vehicle to serve as a launch platform for a satellite. Apart from the aforementioned docking and satellite launches, crew members were responsible for making observations from orbit and generally getting a feel for life in space. Salyut 7 crew members were also the first to cultivate a plant in space. Arabidopsis was the first plant to flower and produce seeds in zero gravity. Crew members were also responsible for making spacewalks to repair and adjust equipment, retrieve experiments and install the station's solar arrays. On the 25th of July 1984, crew member Svetlana Savitskaya became the first woman to carry out extravehicular activity in space. Crisis and Rescue While Salyut 7 has gone down as an undisputed success, there were times when things got a little hairy. In 1983, crew members Vladimir Lyakov and Alexander Alexandrov discovered a fuel leak resulting from damage to pipes on one of the station's fuel tanks. Without the necessary tools and experience to resolve such an issue, ground control prepped the next crew to go and fix it. This subsequent crew, made up of Leonid Kizim and Vladimir Solovyov, would eventually repair the damage, although the feat required four spacewalks to achieve. However, the most famous Salyut 7 crisis is the infamous power failure of February 1985. On the 11th of February, Soviet ground control noted that there was no telemetry coming from the space station. 
Salyut 7 was making random, haphazard moves in orbit, a surefire sign of total system failure. To make things worse, the space station was uninhabited as Kazim and Solovyov had just vacated the station to make way for the next crew. The problem seemed to have been caused by an overcurrent that tripped a circuit breaker and, ultimately, cut off the station's long-range radio transmission system. Ground Control tried to fix this by activating the backup transmitter, which worked for a moment or two. Unfortunately, the ground controller's attempts to restore full systems caused another overcurrent that knocked out both the primary and backup transmission systems. At this point, there was no way to revive the station from Earth. Salyut 7 needed rescuing, and fast, enter the brave duo of Vladimir Janibakov and Viktor Savinik aboard Soyuz T-13. Two astronauts launched into orbit on the 6th of June 1985, with Janibakov piloting. They soon reached the space station, which was rotating on its axis as it drifted aimlessly. Using all of his experience, Janibakov carefully aligned Soyuz T-13 with Salyut 7's forward docking port, matching the rotating space station's pace with superhuman precision. He used their spacecraft's optical rangefinder to help guide this process, and he managed to achieve one of the most epic feats in space travel history. Unfortunately, docking was just the first step. The next, and more dangerous, step was to get into the station and assess whether a manual revival was possible. After going through several hatches and entering the Salyut 7, the men found most of the supplies frozen solid and the interior pitch black. Luckily, the astronauts discovered operable batteries and decided to use the Soyuz craft to bring the space station back in alignment with the sun to charge them up. Once the solar arrays were receiving healthy sunlight, Janibekov and Savanil gingerly brought back various systems. Within 10 days of their launch, the two Soviet heroes had resurrected lighting, water and communications. Salyut 7 had been saved. The space station would remain operational for another year as the Soviets migrated to the all-new Mir space station. Salyut 7 was officially resigned in 1986 and burned up above South America upon re-entry in 1991, three years ahead of schedule. With that, we've reached the end of the video. Thanks again for watching and please subscribe to the channel so we can keep bringing you cool space content. Bye for now.